In the city of Reading, we don't worry about the quality of water that's sent to our homes from the Sacramento River. But do we ever stop to think about the impact we make on that same river after water leaves our home? We're all guilty of occasionally putting the wrong things down the drain, whether we know it or not. And when enough of these wrong items get into the sewer lines, they not only clog our drains and hurt our river, but they can also increase your bill or force you to call a plumber. There's two ways water leaves our homes, through storm drains and sanitary sewers. Storm drains and sanitary sewers are completely separate pipe systems. Sanitary sewers go through a fairly elaborate treatment process before the water is returned to the river. Storm drains, on the other hand, go through no treatment at all. Everything that lands on the street or in parking lots or in drainage ditches flows directly to the Sacramento River with no treatment whatsoever. If you wash your car, that soap is running from your driveway down the gutter right into the storm drain. From there, it goes to the river. You might as well just go ahead and take and just pour it right out into the river. But what they might see more than anything is the trash. The litter and the trash that people might inadvertently throw out their window, that cigarette butt that goes out the window, it is all going to end on the street and it will all be washed into this river. And as the waters come, it's just going to continue to take it further and further down and then ends up in the ocean. What's the proper way of maintaining our storm drains? It's okay to fertilize your lawn, just don't overwater afterwards or fertilize before it rains. Also, wash your car or any other item that may harm a river over grass or gravel. Where does the water go inside our homes? In Reading, wastewater that goes down our drain flows through a main drain pipe called a lateral. This pipe meets up with the city sewer in our streets. The wastewater flows from gravity until we need a pump station to help lift the water up to a higher elevation. This allows the wastewater to continue to flow again until it gets to the wastewater treatment plant. With this big system in place, why does my drain sometimes clog? People have an idea that, you know, there's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles running down these big pipes through the city. It doesn't work that way. We've got, uh, usually coming from a house, you've got three to four inch pipes, so they're small in diameter. So there's your first, your first problem there. The smallest pipe in the system is your own personal pipe. Grease can't go down the drain because it sticks to the pipes, so it basically shrinks it, much like your artery gets constricted when you've been eating greasy food and it reduces the amount of water that can flow through. So then now here comes you know, a, a wipe or a, a matchbox car that your kid flushed down there, and it hits that uh, smaller section of pipe, it gets lodged in there, now it blocks up the pipe, and so that's why you end up calling the plumber to come out and try and snake your drains out. We have to do the same thing, except our pipes in the city start at six inch and they go all the way up to 48 inch. We view the sewer lines throughout the city, and we look for obstructions that could cause problems in the city sewer lines. Uh, for the most part, they're grease, rags, baby wipes, roots um, from trees. Uh, the roots can get very aggressive and they gather nutrients from that sewer water and so they'll start to grow down the lines and cause stoppages. The flushable wipes, normal toilet paper breaks down in about eight seconds and the wipes, they can, they can put it in water and they'll still be resilient after 30 minutes. So what happens is you get multiple wipes, they glog together, they form a ball and then they jam up these pumps. Some residents in Reading use their toilets as a trash can. Reading residents can help by throwing away any solid materials instead of putting them down the drain. They can collect their grease and put it in a bag, put that in the trash as well. Household hazardous waste materials should be taken to the household hazardous waste collection facility. Also, be careful what you plant near your pipes. Watch out for plants that have aggressive root systems. The wastewater flows through the sewer lines until it reaches one of two wastewater treatment plants. The city treats up to 40 million gallons of water per day at their plants. When the uh, wastewater arrives here at the plant, it comes uh, through a collection system to a low point within our plant. The raw sewage that comes in, we pump it up to our headworks. Our headworks is where screening takes place, where there's removal of rags and plastics and anything that's solid. From there, 
the flow stream continues and uh, the flow stream goes to something called a primary clarifier. In that clarifier, what's happening is the raw sewage is coming in and the heavy items are physically, gravity-wise, falling to the bottom. The other part of what's happening in the primary clarifier is a separation of flow stream, the part that's going over the top of the weirs and continuing on through the rest of the plant. That flow stream goes over to the aerobic aeration basins, which you can also see in the distance over my left shoulder. But we're putting air into the bottom of that basin. And what's happening in there is there's aerobic bacteria and microorganisms that are really doing the work for us. They're removing ammonia, ammonium. They're changing the ammonia into nitrites and nitrates. And eventually what happens is a very dangerous pollutant to, uh, to fish is ammonia, and that ammonia is converted to nitrogen gas, which goes off into the air. That nitrogen gas is harmless, which is pretty awesome. Then what happens is, out of that aeration basin on the other side of it, we have four secondary clarifiers, and the, those clarifiers are also settling tanks. And the solids that are going over there settle to the bottom, just like they did in this primary clarifier, at that point, the water that comes off the secondary clarifier goes down over the hill by the river to our chlorine contact chamber and our filters. We have cloth filters and sand filters down there. The water's filtered first. Then it goes into our chlorine contact chamber where it's dosed with chlorine to kill the remaining bacteria. At this point, the water looks very clear and much like the water that comes out of your tap. Then it goes down a long pipeline out to our outfall where it's dechlorinated, and then it goes into the river. It's important to treat wastewater because we as a society want to maintain a clean environment. And through the wastewater treatment plant process, we are able to return water to the river approximately as clean as it was when we took it out of the Sacramento River 10 miles upstream. It's something that's everywhere. This is a global field. It's a global issue. As long as there are people, there will be human waste and there will be some need to manage it. If you flip on your, uh, your light switch, the lights come on. If you turn on your faucet, water comes out. If you flush the toilet, it just disappears and goes away. But there's a, there's a whole network of of processes and pipes and people that have to take care of all this stuff and keep it going. So we have a limited um, staff here and we just really appreciate whatever you can do to help minimize these problems for us. Because as a city we're all kind of in this together so if the sewer line doesn't drain for your house it doesn't drain for your neighbor's house and so on down the line so we all have to work together. Your water, your wastewater infrastructure, your storm drain infrastructure not only belongs to the city of Reading, but it belongs to everyone in the community. And it's everyone's responsibility to take care of it. Let's keep the Sacramento River clean. Think before you flush. Learn more at ReadingUtilities.com.